Chairman. Welcome to the uh, April 19th regular board meeting of the Blue Water District School Board. Just a reminder that the meeting tonight is being held on part of the traditional land of the Saugeen and Ojibwa First Nation. It's been many months since we started the accommodation review process for the Owen Sound Area Group of Schools. Tonight, I'd like to thank our staff for the countless hours that they spent during the past months working on accommodation reviews because it was also the one in Meaford running at the same time. We were working to ensure that the scores of presentations made during the official review period were available to the public at large, working to organize the ARC public meetings and public working meetings, working to prepare reports, supply information and data to committee members to assist them in their deliberations, and listening, always listening to members of the community through the whole process. And this is made obvious by the fact that the recommendations coming before us tonight have been significantly altered since the first initial report. All this, in addition to the normal work to keep our schools running smoothly, work that we too often take for granted. I wish to thank all the individuals, parents, students, school staff, and community members who volunteered to serve on the Accommodation Review Committee, who made presentations and who submitted their ideas, thoughts, and opinions for our consideration. And finally, I wish to thank my fellow trustees who attended the public meetings and the Accommodation Review Committee working meetings to hear firsthand the concerns and thoughtful presentations and ideas from representatives of all the schools that were involved in the ARC process. I wish to thank trustees for reading all the written submissions and presentations, analyzing and assessing the thoughts and ideas presented. If all accommodation discussions could reach consensus as easily as the Meaford Review did, a trustee's life would be much easier. Unfortunately, communities cannot always agree on a single course of action and trustees must thoughtfully choose between differing views, always keeping the pillars of our strategic plan in mind and coming to a decision that is best for our students in the long term, not just for a single region, but for the Blue Water Board as a whole. Please join me to reflect upon the importance of the decision that this Board of Trustees is going to make tonight. Thank you. I require a mover and a seconder that the agenda for the meeting of April 19th, 2016 be approved as printed. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Thompson, seconded by Trustee McComb. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Do any trustees wish to declare a pecuniary interest on any of the items on the agenda tonight? With the record show, I see none. We have four sets of minutes to approve tonight. First uh, motion is that the minutes of the regular board meeting of March 22nd, 2016 be approved as printed. Could I have a mover and a seconder for that? Thank you. Moved by Trustee uh, Dawson, seconded by Trustee Gavler. Are there any errors or omissions to the minutes as they're presented to you? The record show I see none. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as printed? Opposed, if any? Thank you. It's carried. Next is that the minutes of the special board meeting for accommodation review delegations of March 23rd, 2016 be approved as printed. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Hamill, and a seconder, Trustee uh, McComb. 
Are there any errors or omissions to those minutes as they're presented to you? The record show I see none. All those in favor of approving the minutes as presented. Opposed, if any. Thank you. It's carried. Next, that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Board meeting of April 5th, 2016 be approved as printed. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee McCollman, seconded by Trustee Thompson. Are there any errors or omissions to these minutes? With the record show, I see none. All those in favor of the minutes as presented. Opposed, if any. Thank you. It's carried. Final set, that the minutes of the Special Committee of the Whole Board meeting on April 12, 2016 be approved as printed. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, uh, Trustee Johnstone, and seconded by Trustee Thompson. Are there any errors or omissions to these minutes as they're presented to you? This record again show I see none. All those in favor of approval? Opposed, if any? Thank you. It's carried. Is there any business arising from any of the minutes that have been presented? You can let the record show, I see none. Next is our excellence in education. Uh, investigating important social justice issues. We have a speaker with us tonight and uh, Superintendent Wilder is going to start up and I have a motion to start the ball rolling for you. Um, motion is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the excellence in education and investigating important social justice issues report for information. Could I move it? And Trustee Johnstone and the seconder. Trustee uh, Dawson, thank you. Superintendent Wilder. Blue Water District School Board's strategic plan talks about providing quality instruction and learning experiences for its students. And one of those opportunities we provide are oral communication events across the district. And those are supported uh, greatly by our community partners, of which in the report we do list some of the community partners. The Royal Canadian Legion, the Lions Club, Bruce County Council, and Gray County Federation of Agriculture. There are other partners that do support these events, but uh, those are the ones acknowledged in the report. Um, we, we know that the, uh, these opportunities provide great opportunities for the students to demonstrate their literacy skills, their research skills, and of course, oral communication. It is my pleasure this evening, uh, we have a student from Erin Terra, Aubrey Erbshot, and she is here, um, to deliver her speech, and her speech is on missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Uh, I'm so proud of her this evening because the crowd is bigger than normal. So um, she is going to do a great job, and I just thank her so much for being here. I also thank the principal, Pam Milhausen, is here this evening from Erin Terra, and she is just going to introduce Aubrey and talk about the successes that Aubrey has had in delivering her speech. Probably have to move it up for Aubrey. It, it is my pleasure to introduce Aubrey Erbshot. She's a grade seven student at Aaron Terra Elementary School in Terra. Aubrey placed first in our school competition in the intermediate division and went on to achieve first in both the district and the county levels. Proudly, she also took home a gold from the Terra Legion public speaking competition that was held this past winter. It has been a gold medal season for Aubrey. I know she's excited to share her speech with you this evening. You will find it both thought-provoking and insightful. Thank you, Aubrey. Ani Bojo, Aubrey Dijnakazian. I am Indigenous, and I am a girl. This is my red dress, Namiska Jigode. Ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Blue Water School Board. Today I'm about to enlighten you all about an issue that I find to be very concerning, because I'm Indigenous and because I'm a girl. An issue that has gained more attention 
since the recent federal election, and an issue I feel could stand to see more public awareness, which is why I chose to speak on it today. Any ideas? My speech today is dedicated to the many missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. In my culture, Anishinaabe Kwewag women are respected for their spiritual and mental strengths. They are honored for their ability to care for and nurture others. They are givers of life. It is estimated that there has been over 1,200 missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. Most of these involve young women and girls. 17% were girls 18 years and younger. This is not only an issue that Indigenous communities face, but statistically, the disappearance or murder of a non-Native female attracts more attention than that of a Native female. I believe this is the real underlying issue. Therefore, many of these cases have gone unsolved and remain still to be a mystery for the loved ones who are left to mourn the victims. The Native Women's Association of Canada reports that most of these cases occurred in the western provinces. The infamous highway, Highway 16, that runs through northern British Columbia has been branded the Highway of Tears because of its history of murders and disappearances of Indigenous women. British Columbia police statistics have only recognized that 18 women have gone missing on this highway, 17 of them being First Nation. In actuality, this number is almost double. It is estimated that over 50 women have disappeared there. As mentioned, this issue has gained more attention since the most recent federal election. It is proven to be an issue of importance among First Nation communities. Three out of four of the candidates had platforms supporting a national inquiry into the missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. It was the Liberal Party that had captured a majority of the votes in this election. The Liberal leader, Justin Trudeau, promised to launch an inquiry within the first 100 days of becoming Prime Minister during his campaign. Phase one of the inquiry was launched in December. This phase involved meeting with the families of the victims to get their input on how to further design an inquiry and what it needs to achieve. After talking with the families, they plan to consult with national, Aboriginal organizations and a range of frontline service workers. The Liberal Party recognized that this kind of violence against Indigenous women is not just an Indigenous problem, and it is not just a women's issue. They described it to be a national tragedy that requires an urgent national response. Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybald was quoted, This inquiry must find the balance between learning from our past, honoring those who we've lost, reviewing our present, and making concrete, actionable recommendations for the future. The Liberal government had restored hope in Indigenous across Canada. October 4th is a National Day of Remembrance for our missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. And, in an attempt to bring even more attention to this day and the issue, Jamie Black, a Métis artist, created the Red Dress Campaign. Hundreds of red dresses have been donated to an exhibit that has been displayed across Canada. It has been displayed at various universities and at the Nash Museum for Human Rights. Each red dress remembers a lost life, and the color red was chosen because it is a sacred color in my culture that the spirits can see. Black opened this pro project in hope that the public will take action and join her every October 4th by displaying a red dress of their own. This is my red dress, Nemiska. It is more than just a color. It represents the 1,200 missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. They are daughters, they are sisters, and they are mothers, and they have the right to live safely and be free of violence. Chimigwech. Thank you. Thank you for the very powerful presentation, Ms. Herbshot. Trustees have any questions, comments? Trustee Dawson. Thank you, Chair Motz. Um, I don't have a question, I have a comment. I believe that's the first time in my term as a trustee that a presenter on excellence of education had received a standing ovation, and one that was certainly well-deserved. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Trustee Mason. Thanks, Chair. Um, there's two trustees, Trustee Johnstone and myself, had the privilege of doing <coughs> some scoring and judging for the county. So this is the second time I've gotten to hear you. And the message is, is, is equally as powerful both times. You have a strength of voice. You have a rhythm of voice. You have a strength of character. You have a strength of message. I appreciate you sharing that with us tonight. Trustee Johnstone. I'm just thrilled that you could come here and present your speech. I, I know that uh, both uh, Trustee Mason and myself, when we, we judge the speeches, that we just thought that your speech was just so powerful. And for such a, a young person, we really felt that it really needed to be presented before the board. And it's even better is that we have a whole room full of community people to hear your powerful message. So thank you very much for coming. And you did an absolutely wonderful job. Is there anywhere else you compete now? Do you go up any higher in competition? Um, I think this is the last one. <laughs> well, I'm glad that it's ending with us then. <laughs> Trustee John. I don't have a question either. I just have a comment. Chimu Gwech, I think that was an awesome way to start this meeting. And I'm on a positive note. Um, and you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of receiving the um, very excellent report on the excellence in education tonight. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. Thank you, it's carried. The delegation this evening, it starts with me, uh, Ms. Ruby Frank and Colleen Purden. Are they? Thank you. You have 10 minutes um, total time for the board. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, we're here to speak about sexual violence prevention. Uh, and um, I, too, was very touched by the presentation before us and feel that... Um, this presentation follows on the heels of missing, murdered uh, Indigenous women, and uh, we hope that we can engage everyone here today, not only in accommodation review, but also in preventing sexual violence in our communities. Uh, my name is Colleen Purden, and I work with a group called Violence Prevention Grey Bruce. For the last two years, we've been involved in a very active campaign on sexual violence prevention, uh, and I'm here with Ruby Frank. Uh, and she's representing Her Grey Bruce. Uh, it's a group of women who work with Violence Prevention Grey Bruce uh, to make change in our community, and we cannot do this alone. So I'm going to pass it over to Ruby, first of all, to tell you a little bit about Her Grey Bruce, and then I'll come back and say a little bit about some of the initiatives that we're working on. Hello, everyone. Um, again, thank you. And... Uh, we were supposed to be here a few times throughout the winter, I must say, but uh, each time it was delayed, and I can see why. <laughs> we just needed a bigger audience. Um, okay, so we're here now, and uh, I just wanted to touch base a little bit of what we do. We do a variety of different projects. Uh, this one came about, and I'll probably give you a little bit of a background history. history. There's a lot in this presentation, and each of uh, the board members have been given a package along with some other details, and we can kind of look at that. 
um, afterwards. But we do a lot of creative. Uh, we like to uh, do our work, and we like to do it creatively. And so we try to keep coming up with different ways of engaging uh, the community. This, uh, this, so we'll just kind of go through. We started back in November, uh, November 25th, with this campaign. We launched it. You can flip now. Sorry. <laughs> we just saw we had a, an event here in Owen Sound, and um, we started off with the 16 days of activism. And um, our event, we invited musicians to come, and um, we had a public place where we launched our new calendar, which we brought with us here tonight. And it was a place to where we've been, where we've engaged this year men in our community as a women's group. I feel that uh, we're not going to be able to do this work alone. We do need to work with our community, and being a women's group, it's great. We can shout as loud as we want, but really, you know, we need to work together. So this uh, this year, this was our uh, kind of attempt of doing so. Um, so this event kicked off, and you can flip through. Um, previously, we had done, we had engaged these men. We asked them to bring, um, if we could take their pictures, and if there was a message that they would want to share um, to the public. And uh, it started back a couple of years ago, so we can flip through again. We're going to go really quick through this. And as it turned out, in March, of course, of 2015, the Ontario uh, Action Plan was, uh, it's never okay, was launched. And we thought we wanted to do something in our community. Um, so this is how we um, were doing this. So as you know, one in three women experience um, sexual violence in their lifetime. And there's also some great uh, websites that you can go to and some videos that are out there now that the Ontario government has uh, taken initiative to. And they're really touching on a lot of different um, subjects. <clears throat> I won't get into her messages, but uh, there's a about 13 steps that they're looking at, and we are probably touching a little bit on each of them, and one of them is certainly awareness and bringing the conversation in, and that's where the violence prevention, working together and, and going out to the community and having some of these discussions, it's been great. So that's, this is just the French of our calendar, and we try to put some positive words, and um, it's also available too, still for sale. I can't believe that we're selling the 2016 calendar still in April, but it's amazing because we have these men here, and these are all local men who have, um, you know, came forward and, and wanted to have their work and wanted to get their message out to the community. So um, this message here, it takes courage to say no to others. It takes more courage to say no to yourself. And I think that's really a big one. Um, but there's lots of powerful messages. And as a young student of, of uh, OSCVI, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, of course, we decided to put a question on the back of our calendar. So what does a future free of sexual violence against women and children uh, look like to you? Um, we're doing a lot of work with this still, and in May, we're hoping to have a lot more put together. But really, right now, we're just wanting to get through uh, and, and let people know. So we've uh, gone along to a lot of businesses, and so far, we can, there's pages here, sorry. There's roughly about, we've printed 450 calendars, and we're talking about printing some more. So they're going out there, and they're being, all we asked, it's not that we're really selling the calendars, it's not the calendars. We just ask the businesses that if you're going to purchase this, we would ask that you put it in a very prominent place so that when people come in, you know, they'll see these positive messages every year, every, uh, at wherever they go. So that just keeps going. Um, we've also brought some cards in your package, and it's a, a, quite an interesting one. And that's where, like, I think with the school board and possibly the schools could have these at their location. Um, those would be the Draw the Line campaign. It's been around for quite a while, and I've put some samples of the cards in the packages. Those are about 16, but I think they have like maybe about 25 or so that you could choose from. Not all of them per se would, might be appropriate for school places, but in a variety of places. So our plan is to get those out in the community as well. <clears throat> And then, of course, this logo, we're thinking of asking to just move it a little bit forward is to get, you know, depending on the sales, because we operate on a very low budget, but we want to return it back in and perhaps have stickers or something out there 
And then when you see this sign, it starts with me, you will know, like, you know, that that person's probably, we'll probably do some training with them, kind of give them some information of what's going on locally, because I think half the battle is there's a lot of wonderful services all over the place, and it's just, you need to have that connection. And I think when we've got this many businesses who are really interested um, in doing that, we just want to, you know, for, make it grow farther, I guess. <laughs> so... And that's where I'll turn this back over to um, Colleen with um, the end to the open work that she's been doing. So we've been very inspired by the work of her, Gray Bruce. When Ruby says that we don't have much money, they have almost no money, and they do more with no money than any group I've ever seen. So this whole initiative, it starts with me, was them going out and recruiting men who will speak up in our community about preventing sexual violence and getting them to volunteer. And so we helped with the printing costs. All the rest of the work was done by her, Gray Bruce. So we build on their work uh, with the workshops called Into the Open. And I'd say, do we have a lot of people here? Uh, we'd be very happy to come and talk about Into the Open. The idea is we cannot prevent sexual violence if we can't talk about it. We can't talk about sex. We can't talk about sexual violence. We know that in our communities. And these Into the Open community roundtables are an opportunity for people to really talk about sexual violence, how we can prevent it, and how we can work together to make change in our community. We've had four Into the Open roundtables. They've been very well attended. And just this past Saturday, we had an all-day workshop with over 40 artists, survivors of sexual violence, and community members doing Arts for Change. In May, they're going to be showcasing the work they did, screen printing, um, spoken word, uh, songwriting, collage, and painting. They spent a whole day doing messages on how to prevent sexual violence in our community through artistic mediums. So it was very, very exciting and um, not at all dreary, if you know what I mean. It was so hopeful. There's such a release. As one man said, he's a survivor of sexual violence by a priest, um, said, uh, here we are, all sitting here, talking about sexual violence, and the wheels haven't fallen off the bus. And it was absolutely true. Um, so really encourage everyone here, if you want to get involved, or to get the schools involved into the idea of into the open, giving us a language for change in our community. Is, are we close to the end of our 10 minutes? Yes? You are close to the end of your okay, 10 minutes. Okay, we're wrapping up. All right. Just add to that because there's a video that we did from last Saturday, so that will be circulating soon too. Um, One Billion Rising is coming up. There's a flash mob that we're doing. Um, uh, this is just uh, so, uh, the flash mob practice. If you're not able to get tickets because tickets are pretty much sold out with this, uh, we've got a flash mob happening in front of City Hall. Owen Sound at 5 o'clock on April, Friday, April the 29th. And um, I think dancing and moving the energy and having someone such as uh, Alicia coming up, she's going to be into the schools too. She's going uh, to do some workshops in some of the schools. And she's also uh, um, going to lead this, this flash mob. So besides just the concert, right? So. Done. Oh, Thank yes, you. there we go. <laughs> so if you need any more information, I mean, certainly look on um, our website. We have, like, the calendars are certainly there. It's under construction, so there's more changes and things to happen. And uh, yeah. We'd also love to have lots of partnership with the Blue Water Board of Education on all of these issues, so any opportunities that you see for working together, uh, that's what we're all about, preventing violence in all its forms. So if there's questions. Thank you, Ms. Burden. We will have time for one question or comment. Trustee Mason. Thanks, Chair Ron. Uh, I think you're really wise to connect to her movement to art and artists. That, that's really, really sharp because that'll, that'll get you some traction. Just a question. I just had a quick look at, your, at the program. You're focusing on items 2, 3, uh, 8, and 13. Just wondering, do you, do you think there any kind of traction for that pilot program of the free uh, independent legal advice? 
Um, actually, our net, one of our next projects will be revolved around um, court. We're, we're looking at family court issues. Um, that's a separate project probably certainly from this one here. But um, family court, though, is still one of those areas, particularly as we know from media recently and a lot of the things that have happened. Um, we might do another survey. We just completed a survey for the Family Responsibility Office for the um, FRO, it's called the FRO, Get to Know FRO. If you go on our website, you'll get that information too. Um, but we do, we're, we, might just, we do research and gather information, so I think we would love to do some workshops and see where everybody's at, because I know I've talked to a lot of people that are dealing with family courts, and it's been um, a bit interesting. It's been interesting to see that some of the, where some of the issues are, and it's good to get kind of a focus on that and see where we can go with that. I mean, at least make recommendations or something, and that's basically one of the one of the other things that we do. So um, hopefully, that might be the next step for us too. <laughs> I know it's on our agenda. So. Thank you so much. Um, I've seen your name on the agenda so many times now. It's really good to meet you, and thank you for the very worthwhile message. It is wonderful to be here, and actually it was a beautiful drive here with the sun shining, and I couldn't imagine it any other way. Actually, thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much you. for thank having us Thank you so much. Off. Down to the reports. First motion uh, is coming out, or the next series of motions, I'm sorry, is coming out of uh, Committee of the Whole from April 5th, 2016. Uh, since I chaired that, I'll be the mover on each one of these motions, and I'll be looking for a seconder to put it on the floor. The first motion is that the Blue Water District School Board approve rescinding BP 1415D tobacco free environment and BP 6806D drug alcohol and tobacco standards and education as necessary information has been incorporated into related procedures. Could I have a seconder for that please? Thank you Trustee Gavler. Is there any other questions, discussions? If not, all those in favor of the motion as read. Opposed if any. Thank you, it's carried. Second motion requiring a seconder to put on the floor is the Blue Water District School Board approve rescinding BP 2860D advertising within the school. Updated information has been moved into draft administrative procedure AP 2860D advertising and distribution of materials in schools for external groups and organizations. Could I have a seconder for that please? Trustee Thompson, further comments or discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion is read. Opposed, if any. Thank you, it's carried. Third motion is that the Blue Water District School Board approve, uh, approve board policy BP 4705D, student accident insurance as revised from system use, moved by myself and requiring a seconder. Thank you, Trustee Mason. Any further comments, questions? If not, all those in favor of the motion is read. Opposed, if any. Thank you, it's carried. Next motion requiring a seconder to put on the floor is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the March 21st, 2016 Special Education Advisory Committee report for information. Could I have a mover, or seconder for that, I'm sorry? Trustee Thompson. Any comments, questions? If not, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Next motion requiring a seconder to put on the floor is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the Central Health and Safety Steering Committee report for the meeting of February 11th, 2016 for information. Seconded by Trustee Dawson. Further comments or questions for clarification? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Next 
next motion is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the March 10th, 2016 Parent Involvement Committee report for information and then I require a seconder. Thank you, Trustee Hamill. Questions, comments, for clarification? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed to any? Thank you, it's carried. Next motion requiring a seconder to put on the floor is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the OEAP dual credit level one cook report for information. I thank you, Trustee Gaveler. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Next motion is that the Blue Water District School Board receive the Blue Water District School Board Concours 2006 report for information. Could I have a seconder for that, please? Thank you, Trustee McComb. Further comments or questions? If not, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Moving on to the Business Committee of the Whole Report from April 5th, 2016. I have a motion that the Blue Water District School Board receive the report of the, the, report of the Business Committee held on April 5th, 2016. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Dawson. And a seconder, Trustee Johnstone. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Chair Mott. Just like to report that at that meeting, uh, members received a report and presentation on changes to the GSN, that's the grant for student needs for 2016-17. Budget pressures were identified and short-term plans and long-term plans to manage the budget were outlined. A draft budget will be presented to the Business Committee of the Whole Board on May 3, 2016. Members also received a verbal update on the status and timelines regarding the John Diefenbaker Replacement School Project. Thank you, Chair Motts. Thank you, Trustee Dawson. Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, it's carried. Next is recommendations from the Special Committee of the Whole Board, April 12th, 2016. And I will turn this portion over to uh, Trustee Johnstone, who chaired that meeting. Thank you very much, Chair Motts. So what, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the motion, the first motion on the floor, and, and then I am going to ask Superintendent Cummings to come up and um, do a, over, a complete overview. So I'm going to put the motion on that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Owen Sound Collegiate and Vocational Institute students be consolidated with West Hill Secondary School students on the site of the current West Hill Secondary School for the 2016-17 school year, effective September 2016. And that the Owen Sound Collegiate and Vocational Institute, OSCVI, faculty be renovated to accommodate K-8 programming commencing the 2017-18 school year. So I'm looking for a seconder. I meant facility, sorry. <laughs> Can I have a, uh, thank you very much, uh, Trustee Thompson, and welcome Superintendent Cummings. Thank you, Madam Chair, trustees, and attendees. Uh, well, good evening. Uh, I'd like to walk us through the final staff report again, uh, which will provide some clarification on some of the concerns and misinformation that's circulating out there. Uh, the final staff report presents the final recommended option for the Owen Sound Area Group of Schools uh, accommodation review. If you recall, on October 6, 2015, the initial staff report presented the accommodation pressures that exist in the Owen Sound Area Group of Schools. The consultation throughout the accommodation review shaped the preliminary final staff report presented to the Committee of the Whole on March 1st. And on March 23rd, 2016, a special board meeting for accommodation review delegations was held. We put approximately six months of consultation into uh, this accommodation review. Based on this accommodation review, 
the following recommendations are proposed to address the accommodation pressures that exist in the Owen Sound area group of schools. Just read the first one, so if it pleases the trustees, I'll move into number two. The Bayview Public School and Sydenham Community School be closed effective June 30th, 2017, and that the elementary programs from Bayview Public School and Sydenham Community School, including French Immersion, be relocated to the renovated OSCVI facility commencing September 2017. The Dufferin Elementary School be closed effective June 30th, 2017, and that the students at Dufferin Elementary School be relocated to Hillcrest Elementary School, Keppel Sarawak Elementary School, commencing September 2017, based on adjusted boundaries in Appendix 2 and available school capacity for out-of-boundary requests. The Derby Public School be closed effective June 30th, 2016, and that the students at Derby Public School be relocated to Arantara Elementary School, Hillcrest Elementary School, and Hepworth Central Public School, commencing September 2016, based on adjusted boundaries, as per Appendix 3, and available school capacity for out-of-boundary requests, as per administrative procedure. Also, that a plan be presented to the Policy Standing Committee regarding the possible reduction of Owen Sound urban walk distances for secondary students, and that a business case be submitted to the Ministry of Education to seek funding for a secondary school to replace the Owen Sound Secondary School to be named to meet the full future enrollment expectations in the Owen Sound area, and that a business case be submitted to the Ministry of Education to seek funding for an elementary school to replace Hillcrest Elementary School to meet the future ex enrollment expectations. So the, uh, the accommodation issues in the Owen Sound area group of schools can be summarized by the 1,470 surplus spaces um, in the Owen Sound area group of schools, and that's expected to uh, generate net operating losses of about $346,000 uh, in the upcoming year, 2016-17. Add to that, there's a five-year capital renewal backlog of $49 million. Continuing with the current configuration of schools is unsustainable. The recommendations support the board's strategic priorities and aligns with the board motion that sets a target of a 50% reduction in the empty pupil places during this term of the Board of Trustees. As I mentioned, we have spent approximately six months consulting with the Owen Sound community. To summarize the accommodation review process, we started on October 6, 2015. The initial staff report was presented uh, and had presented the accommodation pressures that exist in the Owen Sound area group of schools and recommended that Blue Water District School Board commence an accommodation review of the Owen Sound area group of schools. Part of that, a big part of that review is the community consultation. So following the initial staff report, there was a comprehensive consultation with the upper and lower tier municipalities, community partners, the public, and school staff. Consultation meetings included municipals and community partners meeting held on November 18th, 2015. This was attended by uh, representatives from the City of Owen Sound, Township of Georgian Bluffs, and the County of Gray, and many of our community partners. At that meeting, we discussed the board policy on accommodation review and the initial staff report. But we also asked our participants at this meeting uh, to contact the board if there was further information uh, related to the accommodation re review or planning information that may impact the accommodation review. The County of Gray forwarded the Gray County Growth Management Strategy update in January of 16, and this information has been used throughout the process uh, to update enrollment projections. There's no further planning information received from the city or from the township. There's also a public meeting held on Thursday, December 3rd, 2015, to start off the 40-day consultation period. The Accommodation Review Committee working meetings held on Thursday, January 7th, and Monday, January 25th, 16. And of course, the final public meeting held on Thursday, February 11th, 2016. Summary of these meetings and the minutes have been included in the appendices. The feedback on the accommodation review was also received through a dedicated email address of the board. There was over 100 submissions providing comments, questions, and alternative proposals. There were 18 delegations at the two public meetings, and the accommodation review committee minutes and submissions are available on the board website and in the attached appendices to the final staff report. 
Over the past six months of consulting with the Owen Sound community, we've listened, we've adjusted our recommendation to reflect the sentiment of our whole community, including elementary students and parents. Our 55-member accommodation review committee gave a clear preference for a single secondary school in the Owen Sound area while minimizing transitions for our younger students and providing enhanced programming options for all students. On March 1, 2016, the preliminary final staff report was presented to the Committee of the Whole. The report supported the preference for a single secondary school in the Owen Sound area. The uh, supporting rationale for the recommendations are based on uh, hearing many conversations throughout the consultation period that recognize the need for an accommodation solution uh, that ensured student well-being. The community was able to suggest enhanced options for us to consider. The following support the recommended single grade 9 to 12 secondary school option. First, it provides a long-term sustainable solution to the declining enrollment and accommodation issues in the Owen Sound area group of schools. It would be unlikely to have to revisit in the near future. The bottom of page three in the, in the final staff report, there's a table one. This compares the expected utilization for both options, two seven to 12 schools and the single secondary school. Uh, and while we do see a decline in secondary enrollment uh, over in the future, about five years, it's still strong at 86% under the single secondary school. Uh, where it falls quite low, around 60% under the other option. Also provides the opportunity to enhance secondary program programs at a single consolidated 9 to 12 secondary school. It affords the time to make necessary renovations at OSCVI to accommodate Bayview Public School, Sydenham Community School students. Maintains a K-8 French immersion programming at one location, as well as developmental learning. Further improves utilization and annual school operations financial position uh, over the initial staff report. And some of those financial numbers are included in table two on the next page. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but certainly the single secondary school option provides a stronger financial position in the future. Uh, actually looking at a surplus uh, in the Owens Sound area of about $165,000. This option also eliminates 1,580 surplus spaces, which creates a better position than the initial staff report recommendation. So this is greater than the number of surplus spaces referenced in the initial staff report uh, as a result of students being moved to schools outside the Owen Sound area. Also eliminates $16.5 million in school renewal backlog. Creates a fully utilized secondary school that will provide the opportunity to construct a business case to apply to the ministry for new secondary school in the future Minimizes transportation changes, the routes, and time on the bus, and costs. Provides time to seek partnership opportunities with OSCVI, or at OSCVI, including daycare facilities and possible relocation of Ontario Years program. Allows for continued use and high utilization of our newest school buildings, OSCVI and Alexander. Allows for most students from Derby Public School to attend a rural school. The OSCVI Auditorium will continue to be part of the Owen Sound community and of Blue Water District School Board. OSCVI has available space for parking and an elementary projected bus loop. The Dufferin Elementary School will be consolidated in 1718 when enrollment aligns with Hillcrest Elementary School capacity. That will create a fully utilized Hillcrest Elementary School that will provide the opportunity for a business case to apply to the ministry for a new Hillcrest Elementary School. In that report, there's a table that compares the financial uh, numbers from the, t from the three options. As I said, it's an unsustainable model going forward. Uh, we'd be looking at a $346,000 deficit in that area uh, in 16-17, and that would balloon in 2017-18 to a $525,000 deficit. Both options do help, uh, although, as we mentioned, the single grade 9 to 12 option is a more long-term sustainable option going forward. There were some considerations noted during the consultation and the special board meeting for accommodation review delegations that we were confident we can address uh, and accommodate through our transition process. The site at West Hill will require approximately four portables to accommodate the estimated number of students. 
We have heard the term super school to describe the new West Hill site that would include the students from both secondary schools. The West Hill facility has the effective capacity to accommodate the secondary students from West Hill and OSCVI with temporary use of four portables. The number of students on the West Hill site for 1670 is projected to be between 1,200 and 1,300, depending on the number of returning grade 12s. This is not a large school by Ontario standards, and is much like the West Hill in the early 2000s that accommodated over 1,300 students. The board has portables available to put in place to assist with temporarily accommodating the students. It's expected that by the 2018-19 school year, most of the portables, if not all of them, will no longer be required as enrollment continues to decline in the secondary panel. Other consideration was the need to invest about $1.2 million to renovate OSCVI to accommodate K-8 students, including six kindergarten rooms and washrooms, outdoor play area, and a bus loop. And we've heard about the loss of specialized, purposefully built instructional space if OSCVI is reconfigured. The issue is that you can't use the space if you don't have the kids and the teachers with the qualifications. This year, 16 classrooms at OSCVI were closed. With regards to the greenhouse, what we heard a little bit about this year, there was only two sections of greenhouse industries classes with 38 students in total taking the course. We are committed to investigating moving the greenhouse in the future. There's been some misconception that the auditorium facility is booked all the time. This year, there was only one section of dance with 30 students. We have also had two sections of music theater with 60 students taking the course. Music theater does not exclusively use the auditorium space. Therefore, only three classroom sections out of eight make use of the auditorium space. The auditorium was booked by the community only 27 days in 1415 and was used by the school for 15 days. The auditorium facility will still be retained for community use and programming opportunities going forward. In terms of programming and enhancement staffing, each year we have put additional staffing into OSCVI to ensure balanced program options for, for kids. We need to ensure teachers with particular qualifications are on staff to make sure kids have the options available to make appropriate pathway choices, and this is a cost item. With regard to specialist high skills majors, people have talked about the proximity to the hospital. Several years ago, we had a specialist high skills major in healthcare and it was not sustainable. There were insufficient students selecting the program. Very few Red Seal diplomas granted. At this point, there are currently forecast to be more students at Sydenham Community School for next year than at OSCVI. Sydenham is crowded in congestion. Our 700 plus elementary students at Sydenham and Bayview will have access to this newer facility. Additionally, we have numerous partnership opportunities to investigate, including daycare and early years programming and or continued partnerships with Georgian College. Other items that were considered as the potential capacity issue at Hillcrest, uh, given the consolidations, could be overcome with additional temporary use of portables or boundary changes required to accommodate elementary students at Hillcrest, Keppel, and uh, OCVI K-8. The annual school operations financial position for Owen Sound Area Group of Schools is estimated to be a $50,000 surplus in 16-17 and $165,000 surplus in 17-18. For 16-17, this is approximately a $400,000 turnaround given the expected deficit we were looking at for next year. Another notable point we have presented before is the Ministry's School Board Efficiencies and Modernization Initiative provides a funding model for school operations that penalizes schools with excess space. Funding available in the Owen Sound area group of schools is expected to decline given the number of surplus spaces. Expenses are not going to decline. The ministry also currently provides funding capital as an incentive to school boards to consolidate schools and eliminate surplus space. The school consolidation capital program involves cap or provides capital funding to school boards to support projects that address a board's excess capacity. And this can come in the form of retrofits or new schools. 
We talked a little bit about transition planning, and in order to implement the recommended option, a number of key items will need to be addressed as outlined in the administrative procedure school openings, amalgamations, and closures. A school operations committee will be established and will monitor progress on transition activities and the well-being of students and staff affected by school closure or consolidation. And we'll communicate this information to stakeholders, stakeholders on a regular basis. Superintendent of Education for the area shall act as the chair of the school operations committee and will address immediate issues such as, but not limited to, implementation timeline, timetabling and revised option selection, required facility changes, relocation of portables to the West Hill Secondary School site, historical recognition of school culture, building opportunities, transportation routes and attendance boundaries. Some of the other issues that will need to be addressed over the year include school names and mascots, partnership opportunities, before and after child care programs, community use and new capital investment. As part, of the recommend, as part of the recommendations, there would be a need for renovations at OSCVI consisting of the following. Six new kindergarten classrooms, repurpose some outdoor space for kindergarten elementary play areas, alterations to parking lot for busing, specialty class reconfigurations. The expected cost of these capital charges is approximately $1.2 million. The investment of $1.2 million to renovate OSCVI is modest compared to the substantial long-term benefit the school will provide the students from Sydenham and Bayview. The board will apply to the ministry for funding of this work. In the event that funding is not available, the board has other sources available to proceed with the work. A portion of proceeds from disposition and reprioritized capital funds would be made available. There's about $9.6 million reduction in our five-year renewal needs at Sydenham and Bayview that will no longer have to be funded. Additionally, there's about a $400,000 in operation savings next year and about $16.5 million renewal work overall no longer required based on these recommendations. The return on this investment is substantial. Community partnerships will have the opportunity to play a role going forward Blue Water District School Board continues to be open to opportunities for community partnerships that are interested in shared use of school space to accommodate community need or service. Recent discussions around daycare use and meetings with Georgian College have been positive in looking at future community partnerships and opportunities at OSCVI. Regarding the program changes, all the Olin Sound area secondary students would attend the new, newly consolidated secondary school on the West Hill site in September 16. Staff is confident this is possible. Current option selection processes for compulsory courses would be blended and we would allow students to reselect the expanded from an expanded option course offerings including tech studies options, specialist high school majors, and music theater or extended French. In terms of the transportation, the reorganization and consolidation of the schools in the Owen Sound area would generate new school boundaries uh, and attendance boundaries. The supporting transportation routes for the, new, uh, for the new attendance boundaries have been organized to keep the school communities together when possible and accommodate the consolidation with minimal financial impact. The school boundaries have been adjusted to ensure school enrollments meet the available student capacity at the respective school. School attendance boundaries are included in Appendix 2 for the 17-18 year and Appendix 3 for the 16-17 year. As part of this transition, it would be appropriate at this point to address the board's walk distance and bus eligibility criteria. So it is also recommended that staff report back and present a plan regarding the possible reduction of Owen Sound urban walk distances for secondary students. Again, as mentioned earlier, there will be new capital investment funding available for, replacement, for possible replacement schools. This could be an opportunity for the board but it's not the sole purpose of the recommendation. The facility renewal needs at, West Hill, at the West Hill facility are not necessarily urgent over the next five years. The work is manageable, and staff will continue to maintain the site to meet the students' needs. The facility condition is sufficient to meet the needs of all students, and will continue to do so through diligent care and maintenance over time. That being said, the ministry does offer funding opportunities to assist school boards with reducing surplus spaces and replacing aging facilities. 
The accommodation of secondary students at the current West Hill site is a plan that stands on its own, and the renewal backlog can be managed going forward. These recommendations reduce the complement of schools in the Owen Sound area by four, and we remove an associated $16.5 million in renewal work from the books. The board is in a favorable position to obtain funding through school board efficiencies and modernization because of the reduction of the four older schools and optimizing the use of the Owen Sound's newer schools for the benefit of the students. Uh, we also heard some comments about putting an addition onto the OSCVI to, uh, to support this. Uh, it would be near impossible to convince the ministry to build an addition at a school where there's currently space available and where a nearby school also has the space available. Ministry likes fully utilized schools uh, when they're offering their funding opportunities. A special board meeting for accommodation review delegations was held on March 23, 2016. There were a total of 19 delegations who presented to the Board of Trustees at that meeting. Delegates spoke to the overall recommendation in the preliminary final staff report for elementary and secondary schools in the Owen Sound area and areas of importance to the delegates included many of the things we've talked about this evening, the organization of the schools regarding two 7 to 12 schools and one 9 to 12 school, school size, historical and past accomplishments, expanded program options and more choices for secondary students at one secondary school, extracurricular opportunities, impact on the community, impact on families, and transitioning from rural to urban schools. Delegates included current and former teachers, current and former students, interested community members, and parent members who had served on the Accommodation Review Committee. Overall, the information provided through the delegations was similar to previous materials submitted and discussed throughout the 40-day public consultation phase of the accommodation review process. In summary, this is the final staff report in the accommodation review process for the Owen Sound Area Group of Schools. The Owen Sound and Area Community has approached this task with careful consideration and thorough analysis. Early in our process, there was a recognition that change is necessary in order to create a vibrant, sustainable education environment that will prepare our students today for the world of tomorrow. This process is never easy. It is difficult work, and people are very passionate. People love their schools and have wonderful memories, ourselves included. We're thankful to see the outpouring of support for our teachers and support staff. It means our school cultures are strong, supportive, and caring. It is the people that make the school. These accommodation review recommendations have the potential to create historic changes in the Owen Sound area. The changes will serve the best interests of our students and provide a long-term solution for the education of students in the Owen Sound area with the potential of including a new school. We are confident our Owen Sound and area community will come together to support the best options and program pathways for all of our students. Uh, thank you. Thank you so very much, Superintendent Cummings. So now it, it's up to trustees, so I'll be taking a list of... And, no. and, uh, and if I'm from trustees, so um, he's going to remain here. So if you have any questions or um, that we can direct to him. So I'll be taking a list. So who would like to speak first? Go ahead, uh, Trustee Thompson. We heard on the radio this morning and have received in our uh, email that the Owen Sound City Council passed um, a motion last night to ask that the decision be delayed. Um, and I heard on the radio this morning that some of the council members felt that they hadn't been consulted in our process. I think you touched on this a little bit, but I just wondered if um, perhaps Director Blake could comment, or you? Uh, certainly. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Trustee Thompson, and through the chair to the group of trustees uh, this evening. Um, Superintendent Cummings touched on it uh, earlier uh, this evening. The um, inclusion of our community members uh, as well as our municipal uh, partners was uh, front and foremost in this uh, process. Uh, at the beginning, 
um, of the process, um, the City of Owensown actually wrote to the Minister of Education. And the Minister of Education, in her reply, was very clear that according to um, the ministry guidelines and according to our policy, uh, that would certainly be the case, that municipalities would be given that opportunity to uh, provide input. And we did provide uh, that input by way of a community um, a meeting where our representatives were, were, there, were there from uh, um, various levels uh, of government, including Owen Sound Council staff and council. So um, that, um, the comment that appeared in the, uh, uh, in the paper earlier uh, that um, uh, Councillor uh, Richard Thomas says the board is disinterested in public input, municipal comments, student success, etc. And, and he says council hasn't been able to comment on the accommodation review because of a new process adopted by the Ministry of Education is simply not correct. Um, Councillor Thomas was in that uh, uh, meeting. He sat right across from me during that meeting. And the minister made it very clear that they would be part of the process. But I'd like to take it a little uh, further than that because we were surprised that we did not hear um, from a leadership perspective from the city of um, Owen Sound their thoughts on this, uh, uh, the accommodation process. So we actually before uh, the end of the process, and this is part of our policy, we made the city very clear about this during our discussion with them. They would have an opportunity to provide us um, input on um, accommodations. They give us um, data, share information, their visioning with us. Um, and uh, because we did hear from um, the county, uh, but we did not hear from city of, um, of Owen Sound on that. So we did prompt them. We did send them uh, another uh, message just to remind them that uh, their voice was important. We wanted to hear what they had to say and include that um, in our final report and also invited them to whatever, uh, whatever they shared with us to delegate the board um, as well. So there, there was absolutely uh, uh, nothing provided by the city in this regard. So. Um, as, a, as a director um, and somebody charged with this, this task, if we actually even layer on in June when uh, we had a meeting for community partners uh, and we had um, about 25 uh, individuals uh, in this room, the Owen, Owen Sound uh, Council did not send a representative, uh, nor did they follow up with any material. And I could even go back further uh, to 2014 where I sent them a letter, as I did with all the other municipalities, to indicate um, uh, the accommodation pressures uh, in, uh, in Owen Sound. So I am uh, uh, a bit confused about um, the letter or the motion that uh, they have presented because it is certainly, it doesn't represent uh, the reality of what uh, we have done during this process. Okay, is there uh, any other questions or comments that uh, trustees would like to make? Okay, Trustee Gavler. Final comment. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> Pull it a little bit closer. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I just want to say that the, the decision, this decision which we face tonight, will have the greatest impact on more people than any other decision in which I have ever participated. I hope that whatever it is, in the end, it will turn out to be the best one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee Gavler. And Trustee McComb. Yes, I'm having a lot of difficulty supporting the concept of OSCDI becoming an elementary school. Once it's renovated... <laughs> Once it's renovated and turned into an elementary school with six kindergarten rooms and a thousand students, we can never go back. One of my first golden opportunities after I became a trustee in November 97 was to tour the new OSCVI building, which was under construction. Superintendent Doug Cummy provided me with a hard hat and steel-toed boots, introduced me to
Builder, and we climbed the extension ladder up to the second floor to see the library. It was so exciting to meet with other members of the OSCVI committee each month at the old OSCVI, to hear about the progress that was being made, to choose the fabric for the seats in the auditorium, and to try and iron out details of the sound system installation. It was a proud moment when the new state-of-the-art high school with its music, modern soundproof music rooms opened in 99, and my four grandchildren have been privileged to graduate from the OSCVI. The volunteers on the OSCVI building committee and the alumni worked tirelessly to raise money for the auditorium in a multitude of innovative ways and even sold lunches at auction sales. I realize OSCVI will still be here, even if it's an elementary school. However, the main reason I'm voting against this recommendation is for the sake of today's students. West Hill is a great school. <laughs> West Hill is a great school, but what But with 1,200 students, it will be an overpacked school with four portables, which are costly to operate. And because it's overpacked, the board will apply for government funding to replace a school that's absolutely fine and dandy. It must be in fairly decent shape if we're planning to move 500 more students into it. <laughs> Plus, if we do build a new school on the west side, the shops will be nowhere near what we have now. Let's nurture and protect what we've got. More government funding means more debt for Blue Water, the Blue Water Board, and more taxes for the taxpayers. And there's no guarantee that we'll be getting this funding anytime soon, since the province is also experiencing hard times. So we will be subjecting our high school students in the own sound area to crowded conditions for their entire high school career. This decision is turning out to be a very hasty one, and I don't feel it's treating our students with consideration and that it's in their best interest. At bus time, the area around West Hill is extremely busy now, and the residents of Bone Sound try to avoid that area. With more buses and increased traffic on the narrow city streets where two buses cannot meet, it will be a nightmare. As for parking around the school, four portables will decrease the parking area, and I believe will be next to impossible to accommodate the 36 to 48 vehicles that currently park at the OSCVI. Many of the co-op jobs are far from West Hill. For example, the hospital, nursing homes, east side factories, and as well, most of the after-school jobs are on the east side of town. Some of my other concerns include the FEX program, the dual credit program, and the gym at Georgian College that are accessed by OSCVI students and will be a much greater distance from West Hill. More options is for students is the main reason I would support one high school on Own Sound. However, my grandchildren discovered if they organized their high school career early, they were able to get all the credits they needed at OSCVI. Also, I see no reason why we can't reorganize the programs at the two high schools so that if a student wishes to take the arts, they could attend OSCVI. If they wish trades or technology, go to West Hill. Our supervised alternative learning students do not do well in crowds, and it would be next to impossible for them to attend classes at an overpacked school. These are just a few of the reasons why I'm not supporting this recommendation. Thanks.
Thank you very much, uh, Trustee McComb. Um, is there any other comments? Uh, yes, uh, Trustee Wong. As uh, Trustee Gavler has alluded to, this is a huge decision that's going to impact many stakeholders for many years to come. So my question in stating that is, are there any procedure guidelines that will allow for a 30-day deferral period for one final act of due diligence? This may end up as a symbolic gesture, or it may in fact produce further options. I am certainly not agreeable to the two-year moratorium as requested by the City of Owen Sound. That is much too uh, long of a period, and we do not have the time. But this is too important of a decision, and I feel it, it uh, warrants to allow a, 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 an additional 30-day deferral. There was no extensions requested during the actual ARC process. So that was my question. Um, it allows us to sift through all the data once more, and perhaps up with a potential option B. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and, and Superintendent Stevens is going to speak to it. Thank you. Thank you. And through you, um, uh, Chair, to the group. Um, we were uh, tasked with a very um, uh, difficult job, and, and we did exactly as we were asked to do um, as your staff. We followed the ministry guidelines um, to the letter. Uh, we developed our policies in response to that guidelines to the letter. We had a number of complaints uh, go to the minister and uh, the Ministry of Education, um, questioning the process. The ministry made it clear that we were following the appropriate uh, process. There were complaints that went to the uh, Office of the Ontario Ombudsman regarding our process, including um, issues in terms of um, um, the consultation uh, piece. And the Ombudsman's office made it very clear that Blue Water followed the procedures um, appropriately as well. We have um, done extensive community consultation, I believe as a director, we owe it to our, our community members, especially those who, who went through a process um, that did an excellent job, that gave us tremendous uh, feedback, as well as all of the written responses, as well as the delegations, um, all of those pieces. Um, as, um, as your uh, director charged with the task of managing this process, the reason why an extension was not requested was because there wasn't one needed. Um, we had enough information, it was very clear, in which to formulate the recommendations to the, um, uh, to the board. Thank you very much. Um, is there any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, Trustee Mason. Thanks, Madam Chair. As kind of a new trustee, I entered into the own sound accommodation process by attending the public and board meetings related to the ARC. Attending these meetings, reading the letters, having conversation with folks has provided me with some insights into the voices of the Owen Sound community. In my opinion, we're tasked with a really tricky job here, and the fundamental question to me is very stark. Do we support empty desks or do we invest in students? I think collectively everybody says we have to invest in students. So I think now that the question has really shifted. The shift, shifted question is, well, how do we reduce those desks? And that's the question we're faced with tonight. As a former student, because I was a student a long time ago, as a former teacher, as a current trustee, I believe that the essence of learning does not live in the bricks and mortars of an institution. Rather, I believe that the essence of learning resides in the strengths of the relationships within a given school. It is apparent from all the input, including tonight, that the strength, creativity, and dedication of all the staff at OSCVI has created these positive learning relationships and a positive learning environment. Within the many letters that I've read, there's a bit of a common worry that this positive relationship will somehow be diluted or diminished if the secondary schools combined. I would suggest a different mindset. I think there are times when you divide resources, the outcome is way less than you want. I view the potential, a great potential for inherent in merging these two wonderful learning environments. I'm tending to focus on the future for academics, for art, for music, and for technical learning. I'm convinced that the transition plan will respect the history and legacy of both West Hill and OSCVI and the alumni. 
the projected demographic trends will continue to see a decrease in the secondary school population over the next four or five years. In my opinion, this is likely going to trigger another own sound arc within the four or five years if we were to follow the 7 to 12 model. What it would really do ultimately is just put off this difficult decision. I greatly appreciate the respectful voices around the room tonight and through the process. I also appreciate that I'm just a single voice around this table and I respect that the trustees have different perspectives and views. This evening, based on all that I've done, and I've done a lot of thoughtful consideration, I will be supporting the mindset of a single secondary school in Own Sound. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Trustee Mason. Is there any other questions or comments um, by trustees? Yes, uh, Trustee Thompson. Uh, I also am new to this, and I just want people to know that I've taken a great deal of time to consider everything. Um, I chose to run for the position of trustee. Sometimes wonder why. <laughs> because I value public education, <laughs> students, and communities, and I have taken this commitment very seriously. Through this ARC process, I toured the schools, read every letter, attended all but one of the working group meetings, and I've been impressed by the thoughtful letters, submissions, presentations, and by delegations. The ARC process allowed for input from parents, students, and teachers representing all of the schools, community members, and municipal government. I believe the recommendation we have before us represents the input that was received through this process. Quality education is something we all want for our children. I believe there are many models of excellence within our board and that bigger is not always necessarily better. However, I also believe we should provide the most enriched, vibrant, and sustainable programming possible within each community. We have the opportunity to combine two excellent secondary schools within close proximity to each other into one to provide expanded programming with more stability moving forward. I've also had the opportunity to meet students from West Hill and OSCVI and many other high school students. My own two girls are recent graduates of Blue Water. I am continually, continuously impressed by these talented, thoughtful, engaged young people. I have heard the concerns expressed by the OSCVI students and understand that change is difficult. I also know it can be exciting and enriching. New, ex new experiences are what we make them. I have certainly heard the recent concerns from the OSCVI community, but in, my, but in my opinion, to alter the decision at this time negates all the voices and the process that collectively brought the Blue Water Board to this recommendation. After very, consider very careful consideration, I will be supporting the one high school. Thank you, uh, Trustee Thompson. Any, go ahead, Trustee Dawson. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Like the other trustees, uh, Trustee Mason and Trustee Thompson, I too have read every email that I've received. I've read every media report, and I've spent a lot of time considering this issue. Um, at one time, I did support the 7 to 12 model, but hearing what other people had to say, including members of the community, I will be supporting this motion. I attended a high school in Cambridge that was established in 1852, which I believe makes it older than OSCVI. That school has a lot of memories for me, memories that I cherish. I also attended and uh, taught in a school that was built in 1915. Both these schools are still open. However, they are open because the population in the area allows the schools to be at full capacity. That is not the case at Nolan Sound because of the declining enrollment. It's been commented on that a school is not bricks and mortars. That's true. A school is people. A school is the custodians, the office staff. It's the teachers. It's the support workers. It's the students that make up a school. I'm aware of a school in Eritrea that works out of storage containers. Learning takes place. It's not the building that matters. It's the people in the building that create a school. 
And I believe that combining the excellent staffs that we have at both OSCVI and West Hill, we have an opportunity to provide a, a model, uh, an institution that will provide excellent education for our students today and for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Trustee Dawson. Is there any other comments uh, from trustees around the table or any questions? Okay. I see none. I'm going to put the motion. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, Trustee Gabler. Okay. So that's uh, it's not a voted voted uh, on motion. We just hand out the ballots. So thank you very much. Trustee who is eligible to vote may demand a recorded vote upon any motion being put to a vote, which Mark has done. It is not required to approve a motion to this effect. The chair will declare the results of the vote of each individual trustee and the vote will be recorded in the minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the motion back on the, on the floor and then I'm going to do a roll call and record um, yeas or nays, okay? So here's the motion again. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that Owen Sound Collegiate and Vocational Institute students be consolidated with West Hill Secondary School students on the site of the current West Hill Secondary School for the 2016-17 school year effective September 2016 and that the Owen Sound Collegiate and Vocational Institute OSCVI facility be renovated to accommodate K-8 programming commencing the 2017-18 school year. And I was the original mover of the motion and the seconder of the motion was Trustee Thompson. So I'm just gonna go around. So um, Trustee McComb. Okay. Please indicate whether you're for the motion or against okay. the motion. So you're against? Okay. So Ron's going to. Okay, Trustee Thompson. The motion. Trustee John. Thank you. Trustee Mason. Thank you. Trustee Dawson. Trustee Gabler. Okay. Trustee Wong. Okay, Trust, Trustee Hamill, uh, Chair Motts. For the motion. And I'm voting to support the motion. Okay. So the motion has passed. Um, there were seven that voted for the motion and three that voted against the motion. So thank you very much. I'm now going to put the next motion on the floor. I'll wait a second. Thank you for being patient, trustees. 
So I'm putting the next motion on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Bayview Public School in Sydenham Community School be closed effective June 30th, 2017, and that the elementary programs from Bayview Public School in Sydenham Community School, including French Immersion, be relocated to the renovated OSCVI fa facility commencing September 2017. I'm moving and I need a seconder. Thank you very much, Trustee Hamill. So now we will entertain any questions or comments we'd like to make concerning this particular motion. That flowed actually from the first motion. So does anybody have any comments? Okay, so I've already just put the motion on the floor. So I'm, so I'm going to call the vote if you're ready to vote. All in favor, raise your hands. And opposed, if any. It's carried. Thank you. The next motion, that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Dufferin Elementary School be closed effective June 30th, 2017, and that the students at Dufferin Elementary School be relocated to Hillcrest Elementary School and Keppel Serwak Elementary School commencing September 2017 based on the adjusted boundaries as per report AR 2015.16-0. O2A Appendix 2 and available school capacity for out of boundary requests as per Administrative Procedure AP 6212-D. Uh, I can have a seconder for this motion, please. Oh, thank you, Trustee Gavler. So, and now I, if there's anybody who wants to, trustees have any questions, comments, statements? I see none. I'm now going to be putting the, you know, asking the question if you're running. So all in favor and opposed, it's carried. Next um, motion to be put on the floor is that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Derby Public School be closed effective June 30th, 2016 and that the students at Derby Public School be relocated to Aaron Terra Elementary School, Hillcrest Elementary School, and Hepworth Central Public School commencing September 2016 based on adjusted boundaries as per report AR 2015.16-02A Appendix III and available school capacity for out-of-boundary requests as per Administrative Procedure AP 6212-D. Can I have a seconder for this motion? Thank you, Trustee Dawson. And is there any uh, comments? Okay, Trustee McComb. I would like to uh, put an amendment on the floor for that uh, motion. Uh, my amendment is delete part four of the final staff report and replace with the following. That Derby School be closed effective June the 30th, 2016, and that the students and staff at Derby Public School be relocated and consolidated to Aaron Terra Elementary School, commencing to September 2016, based on adjusted boundaries to include the current Derby Public School t Territory for enrollment and transportation, and that Appendix 3 be revised to include all of Derby Public School current territory. So thank you very much, uh, Trustee McComb. Um, so there's a, a problem and that actually the amendment is out of order because included in your amendment is um, that staff at Derby Public School be relocated re, uh, and consolidated and we can actually uh, do that. That would be under collective 
collective agreements, and we would violate our, uh, in a, collect, our collective agreement with the, um, the FO um, union, so we can't do that. And maybe um, trust, Cynthia would like to speak to this. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's, it's actually, through you to the trustees, it actually is an issue of a collective agreement with all of our bargaining units in that school. So that includes the elementary teachers. It includes the office professionals. It includes the QP members, their custodians. And it includes um, our EAs and ECEs in the ESP group. We're required to follow the collective agreement regarding layoff and surplus. We cannot consolidate all of the staff in Air and Terra. Um, yes, and yes, uh, Trustee McComb. So the motion at this point is out of order. Okay, is there any other questions or comments to be made here? Okay, Trustee Mason. Thanks, Madam Chair. It's clear from all the combined voices that there is really a huge sense of community at Derby School. I've become very sensitive to the concerns from parents of Derby of their involvement in the ARC. I hear the rural option and the issues of splitting the student population in three schools, given that Terra cannot accommodate the entire school. I'm truly conflicted over this particular area. On the flip side, the financial pressures on the board are significant. I recently submitted a budget proposal to the board that would support secondary students who have zero family computer resources. Zero computer resources for secondary students directs a hugely unfair academic playing field. This proposal would cost in the order of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and I believe it's really significant and I also believe it will fail this year because we don't have the money. I have a visceral memory from last year of cutting teacher aids in special education because of a reduced amount in the high need grant. As a board, we are carrying forward a $400,000 plus deficit from last year. That hasn't gone away. As trustees, we will again be faced with another $400,000 plus reduction in the high need amount grant in spec education. And we'll have to deal with that revenue loss. These questions are not clear. There's no single answer that fits everything. Considering the balance of the varied and, and needs across the board, I've decided to support this mindset of closing Derby this evening. Thank you very much, Trustee Mason. Is there any other um, trustees that would like to speak uh, to this m motion? Go ahead, Trustee Hamill. Madam Chair, to um, Superintendent Cummings. Uh, it's kind of a two-pointed question. Um, there have been boundaries drawn if, we, if Derby School is, is to close. Um, I believe that you uh, are planning um, some flexibility. Well, I shouldn't put it that way. Uh, my understanding is that some of the kids that go to Derby would actually prefer to go to Hillcrest and vice versa. Some of those that go to Derby would actually prefer to go to Terra. Um, I know that there's no way of projecting, but is it possible that leaving the boundaries the way they are if we, uh, any time one family wants to go into Terra, that one goes into Hillcrest, that this could possibly work out without um, um, any, anything being done. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, that set of circumstances could certainly happen, all within the framework of the report. The options of out-of-boundary uh, applications for, for students would easily work out. Is there any other questions or uh, comments at this point? Okay, I'm just, and, and, I, and I recognize, um, Trustee McComb, that you would like to speak again. I'm just wanting to ensure um, that other trustees who have not had an opportunity to speak yet, have, you know, I'm, I'm giving them an opportunity. Um, and then if there's nobody else, then absolutely. 
Okay, so is there anybody else that chooses to speak to this, the motion before you? I see none, so go ahead, Trustee McComb. This is sort of a, a tribute to Derby Public School. Derby Public was constructed in 1958 and additions were added to it in 1964 and 1971. Located in a small rural community, Derby School is much more than a building to house students, teachers, and workers. It's a hub that fosters community spirit and plays an integral role in the mental health of the greater community. Derby was promised two more years. The parliam parliamentarian says it was not illegal to rescind the motion. The ombudsman said the board did nothing wrong in rescinding the motion. I may maintain it may not have been illegal, but it was morally unethical. That being said, Derby would appreciate and really needs one more year to properly consolidate with Aaron Terra. Consolidation of Derby to Aaron Terra offers compromise for students and staff and allows the board to operate in good faith. Derby has always been an outstanding school. The environment at Derby supports learning in a safe and a friendly atmosphere. As a result, attendance at Derby has been excellent. Derby students attend school 96.5% of the time. Derby has been our mission statement school. Just watch the interaction between students and teachers and among students themselves. Students at Derby encourage each other's good behavior. At Derby, students are consistently at the top in academics, athletics, music, and overall participation. At Derby, the staff are friends with each other and have been the model of cooperation, commitment, teamwork, and the love of learning. And Derby teachers knew it, know every student in the school by name by the end of the first week of school. A Derby grad once remarked, there is a huge difference in going to a city school and the social environment there, and the added pressure to do things we were taught against at Derby. Derby school has the kind of quality education that brings a Blue Water Board an excellent reputation. It is a gem of a school and should be heralded as a flagship school for Blue, for Blue Water. When Derby students go on to high school, the teachers know from their attitude, their behavior, their respect, their work ethic, and their high level of knowledge that they are from Derby school. I believe that Aaron Tara will be very fortunate indeed to inherit the students and staff from Derby Public School. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee McComb. So is there any other um, comments or questions? Uh, yes, Trustee Wong. Would Trustee McComb's original amendment be allowable if we stroke, strike out the staffing issue? It would, uh, Trustee Wong, it would be in order at that point that you need two thirds. So if you want to put the amendment on the floor, but um, it would require two thirds because it's new, it didn't come with a pre. Yeah, Is, would you like, okay, so who's moving the, the amendment? <laughs> so Trustee McCobb is moving the amendment and Trustee Wong is you're gonna second it, right? Okay, so now we're only gonna be talking about the amendment to the main motion that is now on the floor. So Trustee Dawson. I wonder if the amendment as it has been changed could be read so we're clear in what we're voting on. So that's a question of clarification? Okay. Okay, so um, 
So that the Derby School, okay, this is the amendment, that the Derby School be closed effective June 30, 2016, and that the students um, of Derby Public School be relocated and consolidated to Aaron Terra Elementary School commencing September 2016, based on adjusted boundaries to include the current Derby School ter territory for enrollment and transportation. Um, and that the Appendix 3 be revised to include all of Derby Public School current territory. So um, I, I think I would, I'm going to ask, before I, I go there, I'm going to ask Superintendent Cummings to speak to that. Through the chair procedurally yeah. what the trustees are doing is voting to amend the motion with the revision of to move all the students to Aaron Terra. Blair. Now I'm going to ask um, if um, Superintendent Cummings would speak to that about the fact that, that we you know what that would entail if that there's a cost about it um, any other things that we should know before we actually, you know, consider, deliberate on this motion before? Certainly through Madam Chair and to the trustees. Uh, one of the issues we would have at Aaron Terra is the current enrollment pressure uh, going forward and to unequivocally move all Derby students into Aaron Terra would create a uh, capacity issue uh, and not a temporary one. So the air and terror capacity or expected enrollment over the next few years is, is expected to increase uh, and then drop a little bit. So we don't see a decline in the air and terror school. Um, if you added the full capacity of the 180 students from Derby uh, to the 236 expected um, at air and terror, uh, you would see some type of um, overcapacity in terms of accommodating those extra students. So at this point, it wouldn't be not possible to fit them all into. Can you repeat your last two lines because I had a difficulty hearing what you just said. Certainly. Uh, with the combination of the uh, s stable enrollment at Aaron Terra and the expected enrollment at Derby, uh, it would create an overcapacity at Aaron Terra uh, that could not be accommodated for the next year. Thank you. So um, I see a hand up. Um, Jane, um, do you have a question? And then. I'm just wondering if you could let us know what the capacity is for Aaron Terra, um, and then we have a comparison in terms of the enrollment you just spoke of. The on the ground, through you, Madam Chair, the uh, on the ground capacity is 389. Okay, and Trustee Dawson. Thank you, Chair Johnston. Well, I appreciate the uh, intent of the motion and understand um, why it has been presented. My concern is that it takes away the flexibility of the parents at Derby to choose the school that they wish to have their children go to. By forcing them all to go to Aaron Terra, to me, takes away the, ch the choice option for those parents who wish to have their students attend Hillcrest. Um, just a minute. Did you want to speak to that, uh, Director Blake? Um, thank you. Yes, that's a, a valid point. The other issue that we have uh, to concern in terms of, you know, what we're doing here is minimizing um, the excess space, and it flies in the face of what the board is is tasked with uh, tonight to um, to pay. For, because we don't have these portals, we'd have to pay for a new portable. We have to pay for the yearly upkeep of it. We have to pay for the move, get the appropriate um, uh, uh, permits. It's not something that's going to be temporary because of the uh, the enrollment um, uh, pressures. So uh, what we're doing is essentially playing a shell game, and we're shifting, um, um, unfortunately, um, 
money from one area uh, where we're where we're losing money to another area where we would be losing money in that scenario. We certainly understand the um, uh, the importance of keeping the kids together. We got it 100 percent, and we did that the best that we could given the space that we have. So. We, we've taken those steps. We've already heard this evening that it's possible that it all might work out because uh, we have heard that students will opt for areas that may be closer to their, their home or other areas. So it may all work out in the wash, but for us to deliberately um, overpopulate um, the school when we're trying to do the opposite a school, then it doesn't make any, uh, uh, we, it's not something that staff could, su could support, even though we understand the sentiment behind it. Uh, is there any other questions or comments uh, concerning the amendment? Yes, go ahead, uh, student deliverance. Uh, so does that mean based on students' locations, they have to go to a certain school, or do they get the choice? Just for clarification, sorry. Um, or either, yeah. either or? Certainly, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, Students are assigned a school attendance boundary, and that is the school that they are intended to uh, attend. However, if there's capacity at another school, they may choose to apply to attend to another school. Uh, there may be different circumstances surrounding the, the transportation to that school, though. Space has to exist. Trustee Mason. Thanks, Madam Chair. If we have out of boundary students applying for another school and there's capacity, how do we prioritize, say that there's 15 families apply with 30 students and there's only 20 spots, how do we deal with, with that issue? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the out of boundary requests typically don't come in in a lump like that, so they're dealt with as they come into the schools. Supplementary question to that one. So if, if I'm hearing you right, then it would be sort of first come would, would be first serve. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments concerning the amendment on the floor before you? Okay, Trustee Thompson. When we talk about uh, on-the-ground capacity, and I understand that there's uh, cap sizes on classrooms and different age groups, is that a hard on-the-ground capacity, or is there some flex in that, depending on the size of classrooms and in other parts of the board? Uh, through Madam Chair, Cynthia's coming up. Maybe she'd like to answer this one. We have similar responses, though. There are hard caps for early learning, 26 to 1. There are hard caps for primary, 1, 2, and 3, that's 23. And there are averages, 24.9, for uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. But those have to be attained across the system, as well as just the school. So there's a ripple. Is there any other questions or comments from people who haven't had an opportunity to speak yet? Is there anybody else who's already spoken but would like, um, that, that has not spoken twice already, would like to make a comment or has a question? Okay, so, Trustee Thompson, you've kind of spoke twice. I, and not kind of you, you have, you know, so um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the amended men, um, amendment on the floor. You're only voting on the amendment, okay, and it will, what? That's exactly what I plan to do. <laughs> I have a lot of helpers here. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> okay, so that... Derby School be closed effective June 30th, 2016, and that the students of Derby Public School be relocated and consolidated to Aaron Terra Elementary School, 
commencing September 2016, based on adjusted boundaries to include the current Derby Public School territory for enrollment and transportation, and that the Appendix 3 be revised to include all Derby Public School current territory. The amendment was moved by Trustee Mincombe and seconded by Trustee Wong. I'm going to call the question to realize that it requires two-thirds, okay? So all in favor of this amendment? Opposed, if any? Okay, thank you. So the amendment has, has failed. So now we're going to go back to the main motion. So this is now the main motion that I'm going to be putting on before the, on the floor. That the Blue Water, um, I just want to make sure I have this correctly. Okay, that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Derby Public School be closed effective June 30th, 2016, and that the students at Derby Public School be relocated to Aaron Terra Elementary School, Hillcrest Elementary School, and Hepworth Central Public School commencing September. 2016 based on adjusted boundaries as per report AR 2015 um, period 16-02A appendix 3 and available school capacity for out of boundary requests as per administrative procedure AP 6212-D. It was moved by myself and the seconder was Trustee Thompson. Dawson, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. And all in favor? And now opposed? And the motion is carried. Thank you. I wanted to say, Jim, when you said that, I'll get you and your little dog, too. I'll just wait a second. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that a plan be presented to the Policy Standing Committee regarding the possible reduction of Owen Sound urban walk distances for secondary students. Can I have a seconder for that motion? Thank you, Trustee Thompson. And um, I'm not sure if anybody is going to be speaking to this. No? Okay, is there any questions or comments concerning the motion before you? Yes, Trustee Mason. Just a question of, of logistics. This goes to policy after policy, we make a recommendation that goes back to the board. Thank you. Any other questions or comments concerning the motion? Okay, I hear, I see none. Okay, so I'm going to put the motion back on um, that the Blue Water District School Board approve that a plan be presented to the Policy Standing Committee regarding the possible reduction of Owen Sound urban walk distances for secondary students. <laughs> I moved it and um, the S Trustee Thompson, all in favor and opposed and carried. Okay. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that a business case be submitted to the Ministry of Education to seek funding for a secondary school to replace the Owen Sound Secondary School to be named to meet the future enrollment expectations in the Owen Sound area. Can I have a, a, a seconder for that? Trustee Gavler, is there any comments or questions concerning this motion? I see none. So, yes, Trustee Gavler. Yeah, I mean, the reason I'm um, uh, willing to second it and would support it is that it, it's not, <coughs> this mo motion uh, does not determine where the secondary school would, would be built. So it's a question of um, just the, that, that we apply for the funding and then the decision as to where would happen later. 
That was absolutely correct, Trustee Gabler. Is there any other questions? Okay, I see none. I, we just heard the motion, so I'm going to call the question. All in favor? And opposed, if any? Motion has carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So we just did that. One more. Okay. One more. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that a business case be submitted to the Ministry of Education to seek funding for an elementary school to replace Hillcrest Elementary School to meet future enrollment expectations. Can I have a seconder for that? Trustee Hamill, do we have any um, comments or questions concerning th that recommendation? I see none. I'm calling the question now. All in favor? And opposed and carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, trustees, for all your work in this area tonight. Thank you. And student trustees. And I thank you, too. It was a hard but good piece of work. Moving on in the agenda. We have no report coming out of the Committee of the Whole in camera tonight. Does any trustees wish to bring forward a notice of motion at this time? The record show I see none. We have no committee establishments or appointments. Reports for information. Student Senate report. I believe uh, student uh, trustee Hussein is doing the report tonight. Um, with the warm weather outside, numerous spring sports have started up, including soccer and rugby. Along with that, both elementary schools and high schools are gearing up for track and field that's starting. Um, several students have also moved on to offset for badminton, which will be taking place in Conestoga College this year. Um, numerous students are also looking forward to participating in the upcoming Ontario Skills Competition, which will be taking place on um, May 2nd and 3rd. Recently, the Chesley District Community School and Bruce Peninsula District School held their own Grammys slash or Oscars kind of thing, where they organized, um, which was organized by the Student Council, which involved like student votes for certain categories, including like the most um, likely to be millionaire and most dedicated student within the school. Um, students Council are also preparing for um, student elections for the upcoming year. The Student Senate is also working on the spring newsletter to promote the Senate position for next year. We're also um, verbally promoting it within schools. In specifics, PBDS hosts us dance during school hours to invite grades 7s and 8s, which, which will be um, easing their transition to high school. Lately, Gray Highlands is organizing a school carnival along with an annual pass a dinner and silent auction to raise money for sports teams and equipment at um, Saugeen District Secondary School, surrounding elementary schools um, from grade ones and SKs um, came to experience a horticultural a horticulture for a day. And um, to make at KDSS, we held an assembly revealing the name of our new school mascot, which is named Dwight the Knight. Um, lastly, the Owen Sound is also pr uh, proud of their accomplish accomplishment and having raised over $100,000 over the four years um, and the inside ride event for kids cancer. A few other schools, including elementary and high school students, have also um, supported and participated in this event. Thank you. Um, trustees, have any questions uh, for student Senator Hussein? For student trustee Hussein. Thank you for the report. Um, very comprehensive, and we've got lots of stuff going on in the system yet. Thank you. Staff report with recommendation. Um, we have a motion coming that the King Carden District Secondary School Outdoor Ed Algonquin canoe trip for June 4th to June 8th, 2015. This would normally come, I believe, to committee of the whole board first, but uh, uh, Superintendent Weiler will explain why once I put the motion on the floor. I have a motion that the Blue Water District School Board 
approve the King Carden District Secondary School students participate in the outdoor education Algonquin canoe trip from June 4th to June 8th, 2016. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Johnstone, seconded by Trustee Gavler. Superintendent Wilder. We do ask for the uh, trustee's support. We do recognize that this uh, field trip request is coming in late, so that we are asking for the approval uh, tonight. And it was just a miscommunication in terms of an email uh, thinking it had been sent uh, with the information and it had not upon follow-up. So it is here this evening. You can see the trip is June 4th to June 8th. And it is a trip that has happened before many, many times. Uh, so uh, Trustee Hussein is here to talk to you about the trip and uh, hopefully receive your approval. Um, the grade 11 KDSS outdoor education class is anticipating a four-night canoe trip to Algonquin from, as previously said, um, Saturday, June 4th to Wednesday, June 8th. Students will only be missing three days of school. There are approximately 26 students, along with the course teacher named Mr. Linster and um, adult supervisors for every 10 students going. They will arrive and depart from the Algonquin access number three point. Um, volunteer drivers, mostly chaperones, will be providing transportation there and back. Students will be canoeing approximately 50 km kilometers and portaging approximately seven kilometers to several locations, as seen on the magnetoan points document on the agenda. Um, as part of the course culminating, they will experience living in a true wilderness environment by camping, and it will, it will offer them an opportunity to test their skills they have learned throughout the course. The group um, will be staying in touch with each other and a principal through a rented satellite phone if anything goes wrong. Mr. Lewinster has organized this trip several times in the past and has several qualifications like the National Lifeguard Society. All, the, all students are required to participate in basic first aid training class and the bronze medallion life-saving program um, before attending the trip and have completed the mandatory swim test as outlined in the OPHEA guidelines. Each group will be required to carry a first aid trick kit and the students, the students' medical information form, a whistle, and a personal flotation device. Um, and also um, large um, safety measures are taking place. The trip will cost the students about $300 and will be there will be two fundraising opportunities expecting to raise approximately $500 to $1,000 for the program. Lastly, you can check the itinerary provided in the package for more details. Thank you. I should uh, remind the trustees that we received two packages. The uh, first one came out was somewhat faulty and it was replaced by the proper package. So I just uh, wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Um, questions for uh, Trustee Dawson and then Trustee Wong. Thank you for your presentation on this. And uh, I must say I'm impressed with the uh, supporting documents that came with it. I've always supported these outdoor adventures because I think they have value. And I also have had experience in the particular route that you're taking on back when I was a younger person. Uh, I do have a question. Under the canoeing and portaging section, course PAD 30, I'm wondering how doing a parallel turn and downhill skiing or a slot shot on hockey relates to this particular trip. I suspect that they, oh, if I may, <laughs> thank you. I suspect that they've taken the whole curriculum expectation and added it here as opposed to taking out the part related specifically to canoeing. Let's hope anyway. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope it's not a birch bark canoe they're putting the puck through. Trustee Wong. Question out of curiosity. With volunteer drivers, are a liability and insurance covered by the school board? Thank you. Superintendent Wilder. Yes, we do ensure that our drivers have $2 million liability or whatever the amount is, and they are would be considered covered under... Um, Question, Trustee uh, Mason. Thanks, Chair. I've got two questions, if I may. The first one, all students will be given the opportunity to complete the 10-day swim program. That doesn't mean you have to pass it, though, right? It's, it's just the opportunity to take it? That is my understanding. He okay. just wants to ensure that they have the skills necessary. Right. Yes. Because that could limit 
kids otherwise, who could come and who couldn't. And my other one is a piggyback on trustee Dawson here. Um, use ethical strategies and tactics to enhance performance in canoe lifts and effective portage packing, portage packing. I could see safety. How do ethics come in for <laughs> packaging your canoe? I, I found that interesting. Student trustee Hussein, would you like to answer that? <laughs> Superintendent Wilder. <laughs> if, if you may. It's just above. It's the, in the same area that Trustee Dawson had his question. On the, are the course expectations? Yeah, PD 30. Anyways, you may just want to look at the ethics. You may want to change that one word somehow. Thanks. We will investigate. Maybe you don't step on plants while you're portaging or something. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing all of, seeing no more questions, all those in favor of approval of the trip as presented. Opposed, if any. Thank you. It's carried. Thank you. Don't believe we have anything in. Oh, the correspondence package is just showing up. Trustees um, have been made aware of the motion that came forward from Owen Sound, and um, is that going to be available to all trustees? Then it's in their package. Okay, thank you. That's um, in your package. Just drawing your attention to that. That was dated April nineteenth. The communications announcements um, from OPSPA or other organizations? Can we see none? Director, trustee, conferences, conventions, out of town meetings. I don't think we have anything to report on that. Does any trustees have anything to report? Oh, Trustee Mason. Thanks, Chair. On April 27th, there's a really interesting activity. There's archery that's taking place at Chesley Community School, and in GC Houston students are going to be there, and Chesley students, and I'm not sure of the time, but if you like archery or the nature of archery or the whole area, it's something to consider if you're available. Thank you, Trustee Mason. Any other announcements? Seeing none again, I draw your attention to the um, calendar of events. And I will entertain a final motion at... 10 after 9, that the Blue Water District School Board adjourn at 9, 10 p.m. Could I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Gavler. And seconded by anybody, Trustee Hamill. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone. Good night and safe home. <laughs>